fun to make something that didn't exist before and make it become alive. Makeup, the most magical of the motion picture arts. From the early days of Simple Illusion to the new technology using better materials, and now the latest trickery, special effects taking on a life of their own. Steve Fox looks at the new illusions in a report. Movie magic. ...of the movie makeup specialists. And later in the broadcast, it is rare for makeup artists to win Oscars for their work in the movies. It's happened only twice in 53 years, both special awards. But next Monday, when the Academy Awards are given, there will be an Oscar for makeup, a new regular category. And tonight, with a report on the remarkable new illusions created in the world of makeup, here is Steve Fox. Steve. Hue makeup has always been a highly regarded craft in Hollywood, but in recent years, it has progressed dramatically and become both an art and a science, combining the skills of the painter and the mechanic, the sculptor and the engineer. My name is Jack Kraft. In a way, makeup is the most magical of the motion picture arts because it's the most invisible, pure illusion. Makeup men don't want you to notice their work, just accept it as reality. It's fun to make something that didn't exist before and make it become alive. An actor's face is his most valuable asset, and the makeup man's job is to enhance it, usually by making it more beautiful, sometimes by changing it to meet the demands of a role, occasionally by helping an actor understand the role. There is a, also a sort of a joke that actors say, well, look, I really don't understand the role, but when I get the makeup on, I'll be fine. Because makeup is essential to movie make-believe, the makeup men are paid well, from a union scale minimum of $700 per week to more than three times that amount per day for top artists like Dick Smith, who aged Dustin Hoffman from a fresh-faced teenager into a 121-year-old codger in Little Big Man and who transformed pretty Linda Blair into a hideously possessed child in The Exorcist. When you sit an actor down in a chair and you spend a couple of hours adding on appliances, as we call them, foam rubber, noses and chins and things like that, and then you get to a point where you start putting the paint on, the color, and suddenly these rubber pieces become flesh and it's all Very a new good. face. And suddenly this thing comes to life it's a marvelous feeling. I never cease being thrilled by that magic. Makeup has changed a lot over the years, and this is a story about the latest wrinkle, makeup with a life of its own. A logical development in a way, because makeup has always helped actors bring life to their roles, especially in monster movies. In the early days, silent screen star Lon Chaney Sr. often suffered for the sake of illusion. Using techniques he learned in vaudeville, Chaney improvised many unique but painful makeup characterizations. Lon Chaney Sr., if you look at his Cosimoto makeup, I mean, he tortured himself. He put an 80 pound hump on his back and would put wires inside his mouth to distend it and glass things in his eye. I mean, horrendously painful, terrible things. The result of Cheney's pursuit of screen realism was a gallery of unusual creatures, including the Phantom of the Opera. The most famous movie monster of all, Frankenstein's creature, was the brainchild of Jack Pierce, who consulted medical journals and surgeons before crowning an unknown actor named Boris Karloff with that famous domed head made of wax and heavy clay, a process which essentially remained the industry's standard for the next 30 years. A revolutionary development in makeup arrived with the 1966 film Planet of the Apes for which makeup man John Chambers won a Special Achievement Oscar. 
Before coming to Hollywood, Chambers made prosthetic devices, artificial parts, for wounded World War II veterans. I brought a science to Hollywood of uh, laboratory procedures in, in makeup and making the uh, foam rubber appliances and the different uh, special effects things that we uh, use today. Chambers replaced the heavy clay of the past with new lightweight latex masks, which were much more comfortable and allowed considerable freedom of expression. Why did you run away? Security police. I'm in charge of this man. No longer, madam. He's now in custody of the Ministry of Science. Take your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty ape. At that time, it was a revolutionary thing, those prosthetics, and really quite remarkable. But the apes' makeup now look a little primitive because they had this very stiff foam to work with, and they very stiff. The new stuff is not stiff. The new stuff that they keep inventing and reinventing every day is totally pliable. This is the first step in a process used to create special makeup very for well. many films. Here, Dick Smith and his assistants apply to an actor's face the kind of soft, rubbery material used by dentists to make molds of teeth. Okay, let's see how it looks. After this substance dries and is carefully removed, it serves as a mold Beautiful. into which plaster is poured to create a replica of the actor's face. The makeup artist then adds clay and sculpts onto the bust the face he wants to create. A layer of latex is applied to the finished sculpture, resulting in a flexible mask, which is then cut into several pieces and glued to the actor's face. What the actor has inherited is, in a sense, a second skin. In Little Big Man, Dustin Hoffman's acting brought Dick Smith's old age makeup to life. In Altered States, the makeup brought its own life to the role played by actor William Hurt. In this test footage, Hurt tried out a series of flexible rubber bladders, which caused a thin covering layer of latex skin to move. This is called special effects makeup, the latest development in the art. Special effects makeup is when something to do with the actor or the makeup changes. Arm swells up, face swells up, nose grows long, something like that. That's an effect. But it's a quantum leap into this kind of technology and artistry. Because of constant progress, yesterday's makeup miracles are as long lasting as yesterday's newspaper headlines. A transformation accomplished through makeup and a series of camera tricks. Now, the way they did it was this. Every time Henry Hall walked behind a pillar, they stopped the camera and a makeup man rushed out and changed his appearance slightly. Then the camera rolled again, and Hall walked out from behind the pillar looking more like a werewolf every time. Simple, but effective, at least back then. Today, half a century later, audiences are more sophisticated, which basically means that they're more demanding. Every script I've seen in recent years, whether it's a big production or a, uh, or a low-budget one, has built into it something, something new, some new crazy thing that they want to see on camera. And we have to figure out how to do it. Director John Landis handed just such a script to makeup man Rick Baker for An American Werewolf in London. The early stages of the transformation were accomplished just like in the old days, with makeup applied to actor David Naughton when the camera wasn't rolling and the changes disguised by editing and varying camera angles. But then director Landis reached for more realism. I'm asking for something anatomically impossible to make total visual sense as it happens in bright light. And Rick's going, thanks a lot, you know. To create the makeup effects that Landis demanded, like transforming feet into paws and making ears grow, Baker spent $300,000 of the film's $10 million budget designing makeup that changed right in front of the camera lens. The most dramatic makeup effect, the metamorphosis of the werewolf's head, was accomplished with this, what Baker calls a change head Sculpted from a life mask of the actor and operated with a number of levers and pneumatic devices, this change head when shot in close-up, replaced the actor, 
and the makeup itself became the star. The biggest pressure is just to hope that it works. Like I said, you have a, a prototype thing that you really haven't had a lot of time to work out the bugs with, and you've got hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars standing there looking at you saying, is this going to work? And it did work. Baker's makeup brought his werewolf puppet to life, and this year won him an Academy Award nomination. Well, is it makeup? It is makeup, but it's makeup advanced to a, a new state. You know, I mean, just with what you can do with grease paint is not enough. So they went from grease paint to nose putty, and then they went from nose putty to rubber, you know, and we're just going beyond. Ultimately, it seems that the thing which unites both the practitioners and the admirers of special effects makeup is the sheer love of creation. You have created a monster and it will destroy you. <laughs> Do you ever have nightmares about the things you make? Uh, no, they're my friends. Do you have any idea why you like them? No, I don't. I really don't have a good reason why I like it. I mean, it's like I've seen them develop from a hunk of clay into, into something like this, so... I love it. <laughs> now, Monday night at the Oscar ceremony, we'll find out if his peers in the industry love Baker's creatures as much as he does. Or if they have nightmares. Well, yeah. <laughs>